Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift flip video where I take items that were given to me, found on the side of the road, wherever, and I upcycle them to something that is more my style for resale. So on today's video, we're gonna have a theme, and it's a good one. We are gonna be working with lots of spindles. I love working with spindles, they're so pretty. And if you are on the lookout for them, you can usually get them for pretty cheap. So where I get my spindles is from Cribs. Cribs is a great one. So if you are, if you let people know you're looking for one, and also if they're missing pieces, you can get them for a really good price because there's nothing else anybody can do with them. You know what I mean? Like if a crib is missing a side piece, like you can't actually use it for our baby so i found them on the side of the road i've gotten them with mrs with, with missing pieces from thrift stores for like five bucks also chairs so i actually look for chairs not to fix up but to take apart if you can get a chair for five dollars with lots of spindles you take a little jigsaw you pull the whole thing apart and you can make so much out of that one chair so actually in around the table that we have in here it came with eight chairs and i hated them and i could have sold them for you know maybe eighty dollars for all the chairs but if i take them apart and turn them into other things i can make eighty dollars off of one chair so yes you can make lots of stuff out of chairs so I'm not sure where exactly all these spindles come from. I think these might be from chairs. I'm not sure about these. Also table legs, like if there's a little side table that's falling apart but it got good legs, you can definitely pick that up and turn those spindles into something. So let's get to what we're working on today and what we are specifically, specifically doing with these spindles. So you're always going to end up with some like small spindles. I actually like them smaller and chunkier than this, but I've used all the ones I have like this. But this is not big enough to make a big blanket ladder. If you find some nice big chunky spindles, those are so amazing for blanket ladders because they're really nice and sturdy and just turn the ladder up a whole nother level with those spindles. It is gorgeous. So we're going to make mini ladders with these three spindles i'm not concerned that they're not symmetrical it doesn't matter they are all matching but that doesn't matter to me this is going to be cute so we're going to take these three and we're going to do a mini ladder now it's the same process to do a big ladder so if you wanted to do a big ladder i would definitely go ahead and watch this video and you're going to be doing the same thing just on a bigger scale you know you're going to use more spindles and more wood and stuff like that and then I had a customer that dropped off all this amazing wood to me and she wanted me to make um, a riser for her. A riser is a super popular item for me. This is Cypress. I believe it was a floor joist or a beam or something like that. She's already cut it to the sizes that she wants. So I have a few different ones and a few different sizes and she wants me to turn it into a riser. So I know I've done this before in a video, but these are such good sellers. If y'all are not making risers, y'all need to be. And she dropped off spindles for me. So these aren't particularly the spindles that I would use to make risers, but this is what she gave to me. So this is what we're going to use. So we're going to be cutting up these spindles and turning them into little legs to put on our risers. Then I have this spindle. I don't know where it's from. I think somebody gave me a box of spindles or something. I don't know. But I love how symmetrical this spindle is. So this is going to be so perfect to make a spindle box. Again, another bestseller. If you are, have a booth or something, you need to learn how to make these spindle boxes. They are so popular. They sell so well. They are really not hard to make. Once again, I know I've made this before, but I feel like it's something I need to show y'all again. And like I said, we're going with a theme on this one. It's going to be all about spindles. So let's go ahead and get started on these projects. The first thing I'm going to do is paint all the spindles that I want to paint white. I leave chalk paint in my paint sprayer 
and the only thing I do is I clean the tip before I spray. Now I was being totally lazy here. I didn't want to touch the spindles. So I just decided to spray them like this. And of course that didn't work because they were just rolling all over the place. What you want to do is just hold them up and spray them standing up. You can turn them all the way around and then lean them against something. And then that's the best way to paint them. I was just being lazy and I didn't want to get paint all over my fingers. You could also wear gloves, but again, that's another step that I am most likely not going to take. <laughs> but in the end, they all got painted. Now, once the paint is all dry, I'm going to distress these. I find it's easier just to paint the whole spindle together and distress the whole thing together before I cut it up. I just find that's a time saver instead of cutting it up and then having to do all this. So I'm just distressing it with a piece of sandpaper and then I'm wet distressing it just with baby wipes. If you don't have baby wipes in your work area, I highly suggest that they come in handy all the time. Okay, so she already gave me the piece of wood that she wanted. It was already cut down to size. So all I wanna do is lightly sand it and try to round out the edges just a tiny bit with my sander. On my other ones, what I do is I round it out with my jigsaw, but this piece is way too thick. So I, I wanna keep all the detail. I'm just kinda lightly sanding all the rough areas just so there's not any splinters or anything like that. But I definitely don't want to take away the original character of this piece. We're trying to maintain that because it looks amazing. Now, where it was cut, we need to try to blend it in with the rest of the piece because that looks brand new and the rest of the piece looks old. So we're taking the Waverly Antiquing Wax and water mixture is however you want to mix it up. I don't really think about it. I just add some of the antiquing wax, I add some water. I keep it in this little Tupperware bowl because I use it all the time. And you're gonna put it on your new piece, your new cut piece, but you're also gonna put it on the entire thing. And this will make the whole piece blend together. So if you don't have any old wood that you can use to make risers, this is a two by six from Home Depot. It comes in eight foot and 10 foot strips, maybe even six foot possibly. Um, but I think they're around $10 and you can definitely use these and cut them down to use as risers. I'm just gonna round out the corners, put the antiquing wax on this. That's gonna make it look old, put feet on it and it'll be good to go to its new home. So there, there are definitely options on wood if you don't have old wood you just make new wood look old next i'm going to cut the spindles down now these are the spindles she gave me to use this is not what i normally use so i'm just when i cut spindles i try to find a common area on each one to cut down so that way they end up being the same size so i'm just trying to use all the little natural stops that it already has to cut these down. Now this is what I ended up with. So these spindles must have been hand turned because almost none of them ended up being the same height. So this is definitely not a spindle I would recommend. I'm gonna show y'all what I would use had I used my own spindles. And honestly, this is something I'm not gonna do again. I kinda just said yes, not knowing what I was getting into. I didn't ask enough questions. It ended up working out like I made it, I made do with what I had, but this was probably a order I should have passed on. So these are the spindles I like to use where you can see there is a very clear area where you can cut each time and get the saw in the right spot each time and you come out with nice even legs. So this is what I use for my risers and all of these comes from cribs. These spindles I've just taken off of cribs. So once I sanded down some of the feet and got enough of them to the same size, I'm going to attach them to the bottom I just use wood glue, I attach them, and 
you have like a little bit of time to move your legs around. So I just make sure that they're all even. Then I like to let my glue sit for about 10 minutes. Then I come back with my brad nailer and I think I have a two inch brad nail in here and I nailed them in. The reason I let the glue sit is because your legs will move around when you try to put pressure on them from the nail gun. So I find letting them sit for 10 minutes makes all the difference in the world. And even though I had a little trouble with the feet, I absolutely love how these risers ended up turning out. And now I am on the hunt to find some wood like this for me because I feel like I could sell these risers probably for 30, 40, 50 dollars a piece. They are amazing. Now we're gonna work on the spindle ladder. So for my ladders, I like to use two by fours. This is a piece that was already cut down, but it was still too thick to do a small mini ladder. So I'm just gonna simply cut it in half. Now I'm sure if you go to your local hardware store, they probably have some wood that is already cut close to this size, or you could use stakes. They seem to be like a good size, but I just get two by fours and then cut them down to the size that I need since I have the, you know, the table saw and the tools to use this. Now, if you have writing on your wood, don't worry, this sands right off if you need to get it off. Now, this wood is of course way too new for us, so we're gonna antique it. Once again, I'm just using my mixture of antiquing wax, and water that I keep in this container. I could tell immediately when I put this on that it was way too light. So if you're like me and you just keep it in a container, make sure you actually stir it before you go to use it. I forgot to stir it. And then there you can see it goes on much darker. So if you have a new piece of wood, you can apply this mixture to it and it'll definitely make it look a little more aged and give it, you know, that nice matte aged look. Now we're gonna attach the spindles onto the two pieces of wood. You can see in this picture how much that antiquing wax darkened it up. So I'm going to mark each um, piece of wood where I wanna put the spindle. I'm putting a mark at the center of the wood and then also five inches from the top and five inches from the bottom and that way I'll know on each piece of wood where the spindle needs to go. Now we're ready to attach them. So what I like to do is just kind of set the spindles where I want them to be. And then I like to find something heavy to put on. So you see the first piece of wood, I have it as close to the edge as possible. And then I put something heavy on the other side to keep it in place. That way I don't have to have my fingers in place. And it's easier for you to get your nail gun where it needs to go if it's on the edge of your workbench. So that is how I figured out to do this without putting a nail through your fingers. <laughs> the only time I've ever put a nail through my fingers is doing these spindle ladders. So you just wanna set it up to where you don't have to have your fingers in the way holding your spindle in place. So this is the best way that I found to do it. So I do all one side and then I turn the whole piece over and then I do the other side the exact same way. You put your can where you're going to be nailing and then you're gonna bring it to the edge of your workbench so you can properly put your nail gun because you wanna keep your nail gun as straight as possible so you don't get any wonky nails. It is not fun for that to happen when you're putting a ladder together because then it's kind of hard to fix. So the best thing is try to get your nail in there as straight as possible so it goes straight through and doesn't go out anywhere. 
And then if you wanted to do a bigger ladder, all you'd have to do is make your side pieces bigger and add more spindles on. I usually keep my spindles about a foot apart on my bigger ladders. All right, let's make a spindle box. So you're gonna take your spindle and you're gonna use that as your measurement for your side pieces. So I'm figuring out my measurement and I'm going to cut two pieces of wood. I am using fencing. I get old free fencing. I have a fence guy and this is what I use for a lot of my woodworking pieces. Now I want to like visually see how high I want the other side pieces to go. So I'm just putting my spindle up, seeing um, how far I want it, and figuring out the measurement. So I decided to go 20 inches high, which is pretty high, but I think this one, I just want it to be high and dramatic. So this option is totally up to you, just depending on what kind of spindle you have. If you want like a short, chunky box, or I want it like just a tall, more dramatic box. And then my side pieces, the ones that are 20 inches high, I decided to do a rounded edge. So all I did was looked around my shop for something round and I'm just using that as a template. And then I'm taking my jigsaw out and I'm just going to quickly round out the edges. And I'm gonna do this on both my 20 inch side pieces. Once all the pieces are cut, I'm ready to put it together. I'm gonna to be using my 18 gauge brad nailer. Now I haven't cut the bottom yet. I always save that part for last and use the measurements once the box is all the way together. Now when I'm putting my box together, I simply just put one nail in each side all the way around. That way it makes it easier if you kind of have to move the wood a little bit. You have a little bit of wiggle room. And then once all my pieces are in place with one nail, I go back and add more nails to each side and this secures it firmly in place. And then I'm gonna measure the bottom and attach that as well. Now I'm ready to paint. My bottom is on. I'm using the ready to use antiquing white paint from Walmart. It's about $13 a gallon. It's in a flat finish, so it kind of mimics chalk paint. But this is what I use for my wood. It still distresses very easy and it's much cheaper than chalk paint. And then once my piece is all painted and dry, it took about two coats of paint, I'm going to just sand the edges. I like to lightly sand my pieces. I don't um, overly distress them. So I'm taking my orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper and just hitting up all those edges of my box. Now I didn't film this part, but once I get my fence boards uh, cut down to the size I need, I do sand them all before I put the box together. So it's getting a second sanding right here just to distress. Now we are ready to put the spindle on. I love when it has a really tight fit that makes it so much easier to do because you can really get it in the exact spot that you want because the box kind of holds it in place for you. So normally when I do a spindle box, I put the spindle away at the top, but since I rounded out the edges of this, I thought it'd be really cute to bring the spindle down a little bit. So I'm just looking, making sure that my spindle is all straight. And now I'm using my 16 gauge brad nailer. And I really had to eyeball this one because these spindles are small. And luckily I did it to perfection. So exciting. I got the nails exactly where they needed to be.
I hope y'all enjoyed today's video and was very inspired to go out and make some of these and find y'all some spindles. Please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that I worked on today. If these are the kind of videos you love, please subscribe to my channel. I make these kind of videos every single week. There's lots of thrift flips, lots of DIY for resale, and lots of thrift store shopping. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big